Hey, um, so guys, even if we, and, and, and ladies as well, even as we've been facing such a transitional time as we have been with the pandemic, I have a question. Has anyone been feeling stress concerning time in your life? But think about that. Stress, stress with time in your life as we've been going through this pandemic. So Rob asked me to talk to the leadership group about what God's been showing me and uh, or dealing with me on. And I have to be real honest with you. The first thought that came to my mind, and I really looked at other things, but the first thought that came to my mind and just stuck with me is... Uh, have a, how have I been spending my time? So our community group has recently been uh, studying the art of neighboring. And I know that Jay's brought that up to many of us, uh, as well as uh, uh, Ron Skills uh, has gone through that. Ron and, and Kathy Skills have gone through that study. So our community group has really been uh, uh, indulging in that. And, and one of the primary chapters, uh, they talked about time barriers. And I want to spend just a few minutes on that, and I want to talk to this group about time barriers and about your time. So I would have to say that most of us are probably pretty much champion multitaskers. And I think we can safely say that that truly can become a very dangerous and unhealthy pace of life to live. We all know that, honestly, the healthiest person who ever lived was Jesus. And Jesus masterfully modeled his lifestyle of not being hurried and focused on the things that were truly important, not just comfortable and good. And a perfect example of this that I want to take us to scripture on, I think, really relates to the story of Mary and Martha in Luke 10, chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. So let me just read that real quick. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary. She was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then he told her, then he, then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall be taken, which shall not be taken away from her. So if you think about that story about Mary and Martha, what Martha did by wanting to be a great host and preparing a meal for Jesus and for the disciples, was that wrong? Based on the culture of that time, that's exactly what the women were supposed to do. They were supposed to host. They were supposed to prepare. And, and Martha does this, but with the expectation that Mary's going to help her. And what does Mary do? Immediately, Mary does what? She sits at the feet of Jesus. She gave no concern to what Martha was doing. But the beautiful part about it, and I think the most important part, was that Martha, the effect on Martha was that here... I'm doing what culture has told us, what we know we should be doing, and you're doing what culture tells us not to do. It, it was, uh, in the Hebrew culture, it was just not the thing for a woman to sit at a teacher's feet, especially the foot of a disciple or a rabbi, to, to listen and to, to uh, be engaged in a conversation. And to think that she took that time and although Martha didn't do anything wrong, she did a good thing. Mary did the best thing because Jesus even said, Martha, Martha, why do you concern yourself with this? Mary's done the good thing, the thing that will not be taken away from her. So when we think about that, uh, what are we focusing our time on? The good thing or on the main or the perfect thing? You know, we th uh, if we think of how we can live like Jesus, then our focus must be on the main thing. If we truly believe and live out the commands to love God and love others, then quite often we need to forego some good things to devote, to devote time and energy to the better things. And, you know, when we stop and think about that, we were given those two commands, to love God and to love others. And if we are taking uh, time to do other things other than 
in investing in loving and in getting to know and in investing time in our families and in our neighborhoods, um, then we are missing the point. Because if you think about this, love takes time. And time is the one thing hurried people don't have. So if we continue to be hurried in our life, if we can be, continue to be um, uh, just consumed with all of the little things that may be good, but just aren't the perfect thing, aren't the thing that God's really designed for us, um, especially as leaders, especially if we look at what we're doing with our families during this pandemic time and the difficult times that we've been facing, I don't think any one of us here can ever have imagined that we would be in a situation in 2020 where we have more time on our hands than we could have ever thought. And for some of us initially, it wasn't good time because it meant a loss of job. It meant a loss of time down. It meant a loss of, of doing the things that we're comfortable with and that had been uh, God had planted for us in, in our lives and in our communities. And those things to some degree were taken away and allowed us to maybe refocus on other things. And so we have to think about that because if, if we, um, we have to remember that we live in a world of choices. We have bad choices that can be made. We have good choices that can be made as well. But we also have the best choices that can be made. And I think quite often we settle just for the good choice instead of the best choice because maybe it's, it's comfortable to us. Maybe it doesn't stretch us. Maybe it doesn't allow us to let God work in our lives. Um, and this is, could not have been a better planned time for any one of us. Because I don't know about you, but for myself, uh, just to be able to get to know the people here in, in our area, even though we have been secluded and locked in, um, so has everybody else around here. And you know, we were all, each one of us were pointed into the communities that we're at right now. God put us there for a specific reason. God gave us this pandemic right now and this time that we have for specific reasons. And I think it's to draw closer to him. And I think it's to listen to him. And I think even more so, it's to determine, God, I don't want to do just the good things. I want to do the best. I want to do what you've called me to do. And again, I want to go back to the time, this time that we're talking about right now, the pandemic. If God's place is here purposefully, uh, he's created opportunities for each one of us, and we have to have more time. We have had more time on our hands, more time for family, more time devoted to studying, more time devoted to getting uh, getting more involved in the community as much as we can, although we've been held back to a, a major degree there. Uh, but things, as they begin to open up, now we can kind of see maybe there's an op that opportunity is going to avail itself. And we, we just need to be prepared. Um, and we also need to um, redeem that time. When we start talking about redeeming time, I want to take us real quick back to the scripture in Ephesians 5, where it talks about redeeming time. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, where it says, See then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Redeeming the time, when we think about that passage there in Paul, for most, redeeming time um, is, is a one-time situation or seizing a moment, exploiting one's opportunities, but that's not at all what Paul meant. Paul was suggesting it is a significant time, a decisive moment, a kairos time. Paul is telling Christians He's telling each and every one of us as he's done that through the word that their time what um, to use their time well so that they can make the most of their opportunities to witness for Christ until he returns. So I guess my question to you, um, cause God's really placed this on my heart. And, and I think about each one of us as leaders is how are you using this time? How is God using you to redeem this time? Is he growing you? Is he stretching you? Is he showing you those opportunities that sometimes we tend to overlook just because we're so consumed with, with uh, the non-essentials in life? So I, again, I just want to leave that question with us today is how, how are you dealing with um, and how are you managing the time that God's given you?